<clears throat> All right, I'm gonna make this video very, very short. Um, I just I don't know if you can hear me in a long way from out of it. Um, about for those of you who don't know, I live in Jacksonville, Florida, and there was recently a little girl um, that went missing, and her name is Summer. And um, unfortunately, she was found a few days later um, in a, a garbage dump, basically dead. And um, it's been a big thing here. Um, just lots of people um, praying for the family and, and showing their support um, for the family that's left behind, and just kind of sh showing the the human, the more compassionate side of us, which which I greatly appreciate. Um, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate when things like that happen, but it also shows you um, the kinds of compassion that people can have towards one another. Um, now, with that being said, here's something that, and, and some of you will say that what I'm about to say is completely inappropriate, and some of you will say that I should not have said it. Some of you will say that it's completely racist and that, ever, that I make everything out to be a black and white issue and that I'm wrong for doing so and you can kiss my cake, quite frankly. Um, I think regardless of color, regardless of age, regardless of socioeconomic status, a child is a child. A person is a person. A life is a life. And each and every time that a life is lost, there should be a time of mourning and there should be a time of celebration for the ongoing. Um, I believe that with all my heart. But here's what bugs me about the whole thing. What bugs me is that two things. Two things bug me. First thing that bugs me is that whenever there's an Amber Alert, whenever there's uh, a child that's predominantly featured in the news, as missing, in my experience, is always a white child. Seems to me, whenever we go missing, um, it's mentioned, possibly, lucky if it's mentioned, and if it is mentioned, it's exactly that. It's mentioned, and they move on. But whenever it's a white child, um, that's not from over here, that's on the other side, quote-unquote, they're all over the freaking place. You know what I mean? It's all over the news, every station, and it's covered 24-7. It, it dominates the news. And I'm not saying that, that it should not. When a child's missing, especially when the child is presumed alive, it should be top priority for the community to come together and do any and everything that it can to find that child. But what I'm saying is that some children should not take precedence over others, is what I'm saying. And just because your daughter is from Orange Park, which is supposed to be a better, quote-unquote, side of town, does not mean that her life is more important. That's not what it means at all to me. And what pisses me off, now see, that just kind of bugs me, kind of annoys me. I mean, you, you, you take it as a loss. You understand the way things work. But what pisses me off is that I've counted. And I don't watch um, every news channel, and I don't watch it all day. And I know that there are several different, you know, news segments that are show, th shown throughout the day. So I'm sure that it was mentioned more times than what I heard. But I heard it personally mentioned five times that this is not supposed to happen here. I was so surprised. I, I don't understand. Even the friggin' newscaster said that, that this is Orange Park, you know, and the, the uh, residents don't expect this type of thing to happen. They move here for um, a better school district. They move here because it's a safe community. They move here to avoid these types of things. But here's one thing that I, that I really don't understand about that whole concept is that people travel. Crooks move, okay? Because you move two streets over does not mean that you're excluded from life, death, crime, good and bad, it's all of our life, okay, and that really, what, what, what bothers me more than anything about the statement that it's not supposed to happen to us, 
more so than the fact that you consider yourself elite and that you're somehow above catastrophe, what bothers me more so than that is that the statement saying this is not supposed to happen to us, hello, there's got to be exact opposite of everything. That means that there are some people who it is supposed to happen to. Are you serious? Who is it supposed to happen to? Me? Are you serious? Right now? That somebody breaks into your house and, and steals your most valued possessions on Christmas. This crap happens at Christmas. Or people come in and take people's hard earned money, take their things, to terrorize people. Oh, you know, she lives on the east side. She lives on the north side. That's supposed to happen to them. I live in a well to do neighborhood, so that's not supposed to happen to me. Are you serious right now? Do you hear yourself talking? That kind of crap annoys me. It really pisses me off. And and, and and I do understand that many people, both black and white, come from poverty stricken uh, neighborhoods. And they work hard to be able to afford to live in a better community so that um, their children can have a peace of mind. So that they can go outside and play without having to worry about gunshots and, you know, and things of that nature. But what I'm saying is, you want to move for better schools. You want to move because you want to feel safe. But that does not make you exempt. When things happen, don't look like, oh my God, what in the world? You know what I mean? And I understand that you're, that, that, that there's going to be sadness, you know, that you're going to be shocked. You know, it always feels different when it happens to you. But don't feel like you're better than somebody else and that, that it shouldn't happen to you. I don't think that's right at all. I really don't. Um... Hey. Um, there was something else that I wanted to say about the topic. What was this? She saw the cutest little boy. He totally. Um, his mom's walking him home from school. Probably from after school program. It's late. Anyways, um, something else that I wanted to say. The whole thing is just nuts on me. Oh. What my mom and I were talking about earlier is that, um, freaking Jeffrey Dahmer had all these freaking weirdos. You think he was coming over here eating us? When he was eating y'all? Stop tripping. <laughs> no, but, um, that, that was a sidebar. Um, I don't know. It's just crazy. And, and it, every day I'm at work, I don't know if, if, how they do it at your Walmart, but at my Walmart, on both exit doors, um, there's just a big wall that's dedicated to missing children, and, yeah, for a month or so, they have, um, children featured, it's like 12 to 15 children, I think, on each side, and it tells you, you know, how long they've been missing, where they're missing from, you know, what they were wearing, and, you know, trying to help find them, and I always look at them, and I just feel so sad, because I don't have children, you know, and I cannot imagine the, the, the pain, and just the, the confusion, just the turmoil in your mind from losing a child. I, I, I cannot, nor do I want to understand that. And in and and no way, shape, or form in this video um, am I trying to demean or belittle the parents who have lost children. Not at all. And the, the whole thing is that your child means as much to you as someone else's child means to them. You know what I mean? That, that same feeling that you feel is what they feel. You know, and grief knows no status. Doesn't know if you're making ten dollars or ten billion. It doesn't know if you're black or white or brown or whatever. Grief is grief. And and I think some of I, I won't even continue with this. It is what it is.